Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is for basic machine learning, lecture number 12, one of the notebooks, the notebook on word embeddings. Okay, since you have now already watched the lecture on word embeddings, we are now going to do this in practice. Okay, but we want only to apply them in that sense. So this is rather high level. So here we don't do the basics and don't do them from scratch and something like that. What we are going to use here in this notebook is, uh, notebook is again scikit-learn and Gensim for machine learning stuff. And uh, in particular, of course, we want uh, to use Word2Vec there. And we want to do word embeddings, we know that. And then for visualization, we are using Mathplot as we have done already several times. Okay, so first of all, what we have to do in the very first code section, we will load all the necessary libraries that we will need. And um, we will need URL lib request since we want to download data sets that we work on then here from the web and models also we want to download probably. And um, we need of course Gensim, that's the library and um, here the downloader API so you can directly load a model with that. And then here uh, from scikit-learn we are using Tisney. So this is then a way how to visualize these word embeddings, to visualize high dimensional vector spaces in a two dimensional or three dimensional diagram. And this in the end will be realized via the matplotlib. Okay, so very first thing, we are going to import the libraries. And this is for uh, the Tisney diagram that I was speaking about. So don't go in detail into that. Use it as given, or of course you can analyze it. So this is only the helper function we will need later on for the visualization. Okay, now we are going to load a pre-trained model from the Gensim model library. So Gensim comes with lots of Word2Vec models. And so you can load them here with Gensim downloader load. But first, of course, in the next code section, we want to see, okay, which models are available. So we do um, here API info to see exactly what kind of models are there. And there you see, ah, the fast text, another method. There is something from, uh, again, Wikipedia text. 300 usually means this is the um, dimension 300 or from ConceptNet. This is another kind of uh, knowledge base. But VEC then here from, um, uh, the Ruskov browser, I don't know what that is. It seems to be Russian Wikipedia probably. And here is also Vertovec from Google News. This is the one that is usually a very good one that you can use, so this is huge. And uh, then there are other ones, Glov, for example. Glov, 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 so yeah. But so if you want to use the Google Vertovec corpus that is trained on Google News, um, this is rather huge. This is 1.6 gigabyte. And of course, I will not load this here because you would wait forever and I would have to tell jokes until eternity, until this is loaded. So therefore, the next code here is commented out. So if you have time yourself, load it, try it out. What we are going to do, we are going a shortcut. So this is only a demo. Therefore, we have chosen a smaller model, which is not provided by the Gensim library. So we have to download it from somewhere else. And um, so this is a small or abbreviated Google News model. It's called Word2Vec Slim. So you get more information here by the link. And this is restricted to a vocabulary of only 300,000 words instead of the 3 million words of the original model. So keep in mind, if you did load the original huge corpus here, if you have uncommented it and do it, and, and now you want to do the next section, this would be overwritten. So don't do that if you want to try out um, the original model. Okay, we are going, of course, here to load now um, uh, this model. So for that, what we are giving here is a URL. This is the URL where we will find the co uh, compressed model here of this Google Slim News vector, uh, word -vec vectors. And then, of course, we have to unzip it. So this is the next one. So go unzip. So here is first the URL lib request. So we are retrieving here the URL. Uh, we are giving it the local name here. It's Google News 300 K 300. And we are unzipping it. And then we have to load this vector. And you do this because the vector is so-called, uh, it's encoded in as keyed vectors. And this is exactly 
uh, the library we need here. So uh, keyed vectors, we load the word to vec format here. And this is a binary word to vec format because usually it's smaller and there you load it. We did it, so this took around 30 seconds. This is okay. But of course, loading then the larger model, which is 1.6 gigabyte, will take much longer. Okay, we have now already loaded the model. Now we try to find out, or we want to know a bit more about our model, which means, for example, we want to know, yeah, how does it now really compute similarity? So what are, is the similarity computed between men and women? And you do this here, so you have here the method similarity, which gets then the parameters of exactly the words you want to compare here, women and men. And let's print here the similarity. And usually, of course, all of this is uh, normalized between zero and one. One means identical, zero means absolutely ortho uh, orthogonal. And uh, this is with 0 0.766 already rather similar. Let's go for a less similar pair exactly from our understanding. So ice cream is not necessarily related to percentage or not very similar. Let's see whether here this is smaller. Yeah, it's only 0 0.0311. So this is a rather small similarity. Okay, for these two words, it seems quite well. Let's inspect now the neighborhood of a specific vector. And this is usually done via cosine similarity. So this is then, uh, you know, the way how similarity is usually computed or most generally computed in these models. And here you say then uh, you have the method called most similar, again, applied on our model. And you want to know here, what are the most similar vectors to Berlin? And we take the first 10, so the top 10 of these vectors, of course, in descending order. And what we see here then, of course, the most similar, according to this abbreviated Google News model, is uh, Germany. Yeah, Berlin, Germany. Of course, it has to do something with it. And you have German, Paris, Lange, no idea, Limoges, no idea what that is. Amsterdam, another capital, European capital, Klein, Irving, Claudia. That's interesting. But a few look familiar. Let's try the same game again now with another term. So we try it here with Google. Let's see whether there are other internet companies. So Google, most similar here is Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Googled or Googling, so the verb from Google. Slash dot, life hacker. Yeah, interesting. So that this is assumed to be most similar to Google, but it's not so similar. You see here, the, look at the numbers, 64%, uh, 61%, 60% here. And you remember men and women, man and woman was 76.6 uh, already. You can also directly determine the distance between two given vectors, for example, with model and then the method distance. And we want to know what's the distance between laughing and crying. And here you see, yeah, the distance is 0 0.59. So this is already far apart, we could say. But in the lecture, we also were talking about analogical reasoning. So let's go for our first and really prominent example. This was uh, the relation of men to women relates to king to which. And this is what we want to find out. And therefore, we have to say, OK, on the positive side, we have here uh, king. And we have here also on the positive side woman. And we want to subtract somehow men from that. And then the result could be something like queen. So for that, you also take most similar and you say then, OK, on the positive side here, you have king and you have woman. And on the negative side, we have male. So now we would see if we subtract from this here male, what would be then the substitute or the most similar we have for these two positives. And let's see. You see, first one that has to be determined was queen. Then we have princess, monarch, prince, ruler. So this is not similar anymore or not so similar. So queen was the correct result. You can do more analogical reasoning. For example, you could determine what's the plural of uh, nouns. So let's take on the positive side dogs. And you want to see what's the plural for fox, which means we subtract here the singular of dogs. The outcome should be, as expected, foxes. And squirrels are also there, but of course they're, they have a larger distance, so they are not so similar. There is more language encoded in that. Let's look at the past participle. So let's say we want to have the past participle of learn, which would be learned, and we give it eaten, 
as a template and we subtract eat there. So what's left is learned. So that's nice, also with more than 60%. The same holds for continuous form. Let's see, let's say we, we give the template coming and come from the word come. And we want to know for the word go, what's there, the past participle. And let's see, it works, go going. Very nice. Let's step away from language. Let's go to, let's say, more geographical stuff, capitals. So what's the capital of Germany? And we give the template Paris and France. And then we have here Germany. And we subtract here from this nice set France. And we will see what's the outcome is Berlin. Hooray. So that's nice. So it's really working. Try it out with other countries. I'm sure it will not always work because this is, of course, far from being perfect. But you see the idea behind that. OK. Now let's visualize the stuff. So I give you a set of, let's say, cores or seats we want to visualize within the vector space, which are, of course, different from each other that you see. Of course, they are far apart. And we want to visualize not only a single instance, but also some close things that are around here, our, our seat templates. So we want to visualize man and the closest things to man and ice cream, the closest things to ice cream, cat, movie, cinema and universe. So cinema and movie should be close together, therefore. But universe should be far apart from that. So let's simply try out. So we do again here now this two dimensional reduction of this 300 dimensional space and we see here yeah so it separates things very well this model so you see here cinema and movie they are close together with of course the most similar things that you see here so for movie you have your sequel movies movie ones with a capital ones with a non-capital letter you see here that there was no normalization or lemmatization for the words uh, film films cinema and so on here is the universe cluster then here you have the ice cream, so you see lollies and lolly is near to ice cream. Here you have the cat cluster, dogs are also there, even a beagle. Mm -hmm. And here it's the cluster for man and you see here woman, teenager, boy and also a robber. Mm. Very nice. So this is the pre-trained Google model. One thing we can also do here is we can of course uh, train our own model. For that, to make this somehow feasible within and i already start this now while i'm while i'm talking to make this feasible we choose a rather small data set that has to be loaded here and here the data set that uh, we are importing here is uh, called text aid this is a small data set that has been created uh, from wikipedia text its size is around 30 megabytes so you see here it's just loading and what do we hear now is of course um, we are doing word to vec so we are creating here a model from a specific data set and the data set that we have loaded here is text 8 so this is the data set we had to load from the jensen library and now the training starts and it goes and it goes and you see here Ta-da! So, it's done. Okay. Now, our model is fully trained. And what we can do now is we can play around with it. And we do exactly the same stuff that we did before, not all of that. So we want to see what's the similar there in our model from woman to man. Again, here, impressive. So for model two, here you see that we um, have tried woman and man also similarity 76, which is already high. Let's look at the most similar things to Berlin. And you see here now our list is different. So the most similar thing to Berlin, according to the Wikipedia text, which was of course different from the news corpus from Google, says, yeah, here the most similar is Munich, Vienna, Hamburg, Frankfurt. So these are all other kind of cities. And then you have Moscow, that's impressive. Germany comes late down here. Um, yeah, let's try also whether this model is capable of analogical reasoning. So again, we have here king, woman and want to subtract male. So what relates to male and king if I have woman and it 
should be queen. Let's see whether this works also with the small metal that we have trained on our own. Ah, uh, not quite. So you see here, it's the prince that relates here to a uh, king in the same way like male to woman. So this model looks quite different from our original model that we trained in the beginning or that we have used in the beginning, the pre-trained model. And now let's visualize it and let's have a look how it looks like. And you see here the clusters for Mancat Movie Cinema Universe, so what we had previously, are not as nicely shaped as they were with the Google News Corp. So that was much better trained than, than our um, small model that we trained here. And you see here, here are the movies. Batman is also there and there is cinema. Of course, they are still close, but not as close as last time. Here we have the universe and there comes already, oh, what comes there? Pig, hamster, creature, bride, remake, bird, cat, dog. So this cluster probably goes together. So what the bride is doing here, I'm not quite sure. And there we have man, woman, girl. But the point to make here is to see, you know, if you have, let's say, a larger corpus and if you invest more time into the training, then you get better representation of the semantics of these vectors regarding their similarity. And exactly this, of course, has been visualized here in this Tisney plot, in this two-dimensional plot, when we compare the original model that we had in the beginning, which was full-fledged. Um, also, it was only the slim Google News Corp, but it, what it but was not the large one. So you can try it out with a 1.6 uh, gigabyte model also. And of course, the small one, which is only 30 megabyte that of text that we have then tried to incorporate into our model. Okay, so far so good. So this was word embeddings. Um, there we have a small bibliography. Of course, then try it out, copy the the um, the notebook, and then try it out on your own. Uh, do variations, use other kind of models, play around with it, and of course, enjoy and have fun. Um, yeah, how it proceeding in the lecture so if you want to continue the lecture from this point we have again another machine learning lecture coming up and this then will focus on another kind of embeddings we did now worth embeddings and in the next lecture we will do knowledge graph embeddings this means we are combining here the second part of the lecture which was about symbolic knowledge representation and knowledge graphs with machine learning because now we try to encode the meaning of a node and its similarity to other nodes within vectors. So we want to try out knowledge graph embeddings.